Hello guys and welcome to another episode of my lecture. This is Ola Yeni, Dear Kolola Daniels, popularly known as Dear Ko Spectre. And welcome to another episode of Dear Ko Talks Law. On today's episode, we will be talking about Natural Law Explained, the part A. In my last episode, I discussed the introduction to the theory of law. And then I give you a bit of an exposition as to what you are likely to find in subsequent lectures. And the first of the lecture is going to be natural law, where we will succinctly describe what natural law is and give you a little bit of an exposition. But before we go into it, if this is your first time of coming to my channel, please make sure that you click the subscribe button below. Make sure that you click the notification bell so that anytime I release a video which is going to be of interest to you, you'll be one of the first set of people to watch that particular video. And also make sure that you follow me on LinkedIn, very importantly. Follow me on LinkedIn, click the subscribe button, click the notification bell. Thank you so much. So moving on to what we are talking about today the natural school of law you should be looking at a breakdown of how the lecture is going to go the part a which is this class will be talking about the meaning of natural law the philosophers of natural school of law and also the examples of law with influences of natural law like i said in the latter part of my lecture regarding the introduction to the theory of law now the part b which is going to be the next lecture we will talk about only the cases involving natural law where I'm going to interrogate certain cases for you and give you an exposition into how to read and understand cases and also connect those cases to the principle of natural law part C I'm going to talk about the natural law and customary law what is the relationship is there a convergence between them where they are similar also is there a divergence between them where they are different what is the convergence and the divergence between natural law and customary law and then lastly on our part C we are going to be talking about the criticism of natural law there is no how good a theory is a theory must have flaws and therefore we will discuss these flaws in our part c where we talk about the criticism alongside natural law and customary law so straight to what we are to talk about in this class which is first of all the meaning of the natural theory of law now reduced to its simplest term natural law means what is fair what is just and what is right that is the in fact, once you understand that, you've understood natural law. That is the first thing. Now, when you are talking about theories of law, do not forget that in the last class, I told you that when you are talking about what is law, you can't talk about what is law without talking about the theories. It's not possible. What do you want to write in exam? Uh, law is a collection of rules that we use to guide the society. Full stop. And give it to the teacher, you will get zero. <laughs> you think you think that's secondary school? It's secondary school that uses something like that. Now, when they ask you what is law, in actual fact, they are telling you interrogate all the theories of law. That's what they're asking you. When they tell you what is law, <laughs> they want you to write a whole thesis for them. If you know what a thesis is, a thesis is what you 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 have when you are about to get a PhD, you know, that's doctor of philosophy which is uh, which is the highest degree you can get in any course so you know when i tell you that they want you to write a thesis that means they want you to do a very good job at explaining but when you are talking about the natural law or any other theories of law one of the things you need to know you need to know the meaning you need to know the philosophers who are the philosophers the people who thought about or wrote about this particular subject matter and then you also need to know the cases what are the cases that you know are gone before the courts you also need to know as importantly the laws that seem to align with this theory and also the criticism but for now we are talking about the meaning and then the simplest meaning that we can see is what is fair what is just and what is right the philosophers of natural theory hold that there are certain objective principles in every man no matter his race or color 
telling him what is fair what is just and what is right motivating him to do what is good and abstain from evil which is very very true now imagine that you you tell a child that the child should put his hand on fire the child being very curious say hey ah, i want to try something new but the moment that hand goes straight to fire the child immediately redraw his hand why because the child knows the difference between what is good and what is bad and you would automatically know that putting hand inside fire is bad right that is the same way instinctively every human being knows what is right and what is wrong are you listening to me instinctively you can tell what is right and what is wrong and that is what my note here is saying telling you that the philosophers of natural theory or that there are certain objective principle in every man no matter his race or color telling him what is fair just or right motivating him to do what is good and abstain from what is evil if one of okuniga's book which he never published actually uh, jurisprudence by a o okuniga he said something which i feel that you should always have at the back of your head if 10 men from different countries are put in separate rooms and each of them is asked in the language that you understand whether it is good to steal majority will say no <laughs> do you understand that carry somebody from nigeria somebody from south africa someone from us someone from colombia someone from uh, lithuania in europe someone from macedonia someone from malta someone from equatorial guinea someone from congo so just bring somebody from all these different countries just one person put them in the room and ask each of them is it good to steal or is it good to kill and just wait for the response instinctively regardless of the country or the language they speak or the food they eat they will tell you that it is not in short majority because we have to know that certain people are mad you know we have objective objective people and we have people that subjectively there, there's something wrong with them so <laughs> you need to understand that so majority will tell you that yes it isn't good to steal there are some people amongst those people that you have brought that are thieves so they will see that ah I just collect my own share now since government no one give me my property so myself I they steal from people you get they want to give an excuse to steal it but objectively people majority will say no now you need to note that these external principles telling a man what is good fair and just are referred to as what natural law are you listening to me now we go to the next part uh, which is that the natural law school posits that there are certain generally acceptable fundamental principles inherent in human existence and all social groups these principles emanated from social supernatural force or abstract universal truths and exist irrespective of any human enactment the principle can be deduced from nature that is from the nature of man from the nature of society and from the nature of things through reasoning i love this i love these lines the principle can be deduced from nature now from the nature of man naturally you would not want to see somebody kill you therefore logically you would not want to kill somebody from the nature of the society when people die people are sad you have except someone is abnormal you will never see anybody go to a burial ground smiling do you understand therefore society frowns at people killing each other because obviously it will make the society not happy do you understand that and from the nature of things through reasoning now for you to be able to achieve all these things through nature you have to reason which is something that i can tell you for a fact that a lot of people do not know how to do reasoning when you listen to some people talk you just shake your head and say it is going to be a disrespect to me to give you a response do you understand that when you listen to the opinion of certain people you shake your own head to say that it is going to be a disrespect to me to give you a response 
<laughs> reasoning is such that it's a skill that you have to sharpen every day reasoning is not inbuilt into you instincts are inbuilt into you but those instincts has to be sharpened through reasoning are you are you listening because naturally you are supposed to know that it is bad to kill right but when you don't reason well there are certain killing that you begin to justify for example when there is a protest you know a peaceful protest and police are shooting at people you begin to justify it by saying things like eh why are the people not in their home and stuff like that you you see that at certain points like that you begin to lack certain reasoning begin to justify killing you know i think killing can only be justified when you are acting in self-defense where you see people carrying placards protesting for their rights and police shooting at them and you are justifying that by them not being at home but being on the street there is something wrong with your own sense of reasoning and you know there's an adage that says that a madman will never say that i am mad so a person who doesn't have a good reasoning will never tell you that he doesn't have a good reasoning a madman never admits that he's mad. Uh, do you understand? So, which means personally, for you to be able to be adept with natural law, your reasoning has to be sharp. You have to make sure that you work on it all the time. But let us move on with the class. Hence, by a careful examination of the fact of nature, man can find the just solution to the social problem in his society. You see the reason I was talking about, you know, reasoning. A lot of you might think that I digressed. I did not. We are talking about finding solution to the society. The only way you can do that is when you can reason properly. If you don't know how to reason properly, then when it comes to finding solution to the society, which is the aim of natural law, you will fail you would not know how to which is the reason your reason has to be good so in other words man if guided by observation are you seeing that and reason is capable of making good and just law imagine somebody whose reasoning is not good and is elected into the legislature we are dead it's not like the ones we have in the legislature are, are top notch when it comes to reasoning. I mean, you begin to hear certain laws that they want to promulgate and you begin to shake your head. What, what is wrong with these people exactly? Who voted you people in? Do you understand? So let's go back to what we are talking about. Now, if guided by reason and observation is capable of what? Making good law, which are in line with the law of nature. Man-made laws should accord with what? With natural law. Otherwise, such law should not command the obedience of people. Are you, are you listening? Do you understand? Man-made laws should accord with natural law or else it should not what? It should not command the obedience of people. Reasoning. I think one thing about the natural law, which I love so much, is the ability to reason. There is no one size fit all in relation to natural law. There is no one size fit all. Just like I said that killing is not good, which is the general rule. However, I told you that there is an exception when you are acting in self-defense. Can you see that there is no one size fit all? So now somebody has come to rob in your house. You have a gun under your bed and the person is charging in with AK-47, shooting sporadically. And you now say, ah, natural law said that ah, killing is not good. Let me not use my gun. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's you and Jesus Christ that is going to talk very soon. Just wait. Don't use it though. Wait. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when you are talking about, you know, uh, uh, reasoning, reasoning will tell you that in certain issues, you have to bend certain rules. So in relation to protest, not naturally, there is no reason why anybody should go outside and be protesting. There is no reason. However, when Asu is on strike for months, and then you have something like the aviation threatening to go on strike they didn't go threatening to go on strike in less than 48 hours the issue was resolved in less than 48 hours because the politicians knew that the moment the aviation is shut down they will not be able to travel and movement they will have to go through the same trains and cars that the natural ordinary people go through where they are being kidnapped in the north and all that they immediately found a solution but when it comes to the educational system of the natural people because they know their own children is abroad they decided to do nothing for months 
since about January, February to the time I'm releasing this video, nothing. So it stands to reason that a natural person would want to carry placards and protest. So when you see those people protesting, which they have the right to do, when police begin to shoot at them how can somebody then begin to give an excuse to such shooting by saying that they should go home can you see that that person's reasoning is flawed do you understand what i'm saying there has to be reason so we then move on to our next a, a, a slide which we are talking about the fact that the natural law philosophy has served as the basis of development of the concept of equity human rights democracy across the globe before we go a little bit i know that when i talk about natural law i tend to say a lot of things but i'm trying to cut you know things down but just to give you context now we are talking about the concept of uh, equality equity human rights and all that you would know that there was a time in the world when they said that women should not have the right to education you would know that there was a time in the world when they said that women should not have the right to be elected into certain uh, 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 political position you will know that there was a time in the world where they would tell you that women are supposed to do all house chores and not to be seen outside in you know gathering where men are but can we see off that today no no because as at now certain people looked at it and said what is fair what is just and what is right to tell a woman not to do those things is not fair just and right as at that time as at that time certain people actually felt that women are the weaker vessels and then they felt that it was fair to protect them so to say but somebody then reasoned and said no why are we discriminating women or regarding them as weaker vessels enough to say they should not participate in politics they have the same brain as we do they have the same hands as we do they have the same head as we do eyes nose legs every single thing so what then differentiate only the testosterone in a man's system differentiate that from a woman no other thing and the fact that a woman can give birth a man can't apart from those simple biological differences they do not hinder our ability to do any other thing so that is reasoning that is thinking i know that this class is still going to get certain patriarchal people very angry it's those people that still feel that women should not have whatever it is but i would like you to challenge your reasoning once more you know i said that certain people's reasoning are flawed i think that your reasoning as to the patriarchy of the society is flawed and you need to challenge it once more and that reasoning like i said earlier forms the basis of the equality of gender we talk about human rights we talk about democracy those things are formed because natural law told us that we should think of what is fair what is just and what is right can a person shoot another person indiscriminately no why human rights can you arrest a person for more than 24 hours and lock the person up no investigation no charge read to him reason for arrest nothing just lock him up 24 hours 48 hours 72 hours four days five days one week two weeks is locked up no food no water no uh, uh, changing of his clothes nothing why can't you do that human rights can you tell a person that you are a christian i don't like it you must change to islam now or, or you are a muslim i don't like it you must change to christianity now no why because of right to religion do you understand what i'm saying all these things came because we decided to think we decided to what think and that thinking was done through natural law think of what is fair what is just and what is right now now natural law was invoked by the american in their war of independence from britain i'm very sure most of you did not know that britain colonized america now by the french during the french revolutions and by the africans during their struggle for independence from their colonial masters 
the people from the Niger Delta area in Nigeria are currently invoking natural law as the basis of the clamor for a more equitable share of the revenue from the petroleum resources derived from the area or in the alternative the enthronement of a regime of resource control now this is what i'm telling you which i told you everything has to do with reasoning once you have understood a theory so to say you can apply it in every situation that is going right now we have a penny situation in nigeria the place where you have the highest deposit of crude oil is niger delta niger delta gives in short i will tell you that niger delta is the pillar upon which the nigerian uh, revenue account you know lies on if we remove niger delta from nigeria nigeria will be poor yes we have other mineral resources but we do not we do not take advantage of those other mineral resources we just capitalize on the crude oil and what it gives us and the people of niger delta you we have so many cases shell versus this shell versus that where we have shell a corporation that is saddled with the responsibility of digging up this crude oil from the ground this corporation will be so negligent in their duty that when the crude oil is being dug and all that it begins to spill on people's farm land it begins to spill in water now people's way of getting money their means of livelihood destroyed and nobody cares because i mean what is the goal there that shell brings out the oil and what do we do we get the money as politicians we put it in our pocket right yes and when that is done one malam from nuts will carry the whole money and go into overseas account throw it inside overseas account by malam i'm talking about sanya abacha if you have not made your research go and make your research on what and the extent of which sanya abacha stole from i'm not saying that he's the only person that stole but i'm saying that he stole the most to the extent that even after his death he always at some point we just say ah nigeria wow 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 let me just transfer this money to you people mm. you just see something like uh, 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 we found uh, sanya abacha's looted money from singapore another time sanya abacha will just look up from heaven again and smile at us and say why are you people are suffering oh let let me give you another money you just see another thing sanya abacha yeah we looted money in, in this bank and then you need to do the research on that this money that sanya abacha single-handedly stole came from the niger delta's revenue but when we get to niger delta today we don't have a world-class hospital or a world-class university we don't have world-class roads or world-class bridges we don't have world-class you know education we don't have anything of such in the Niger Delta. And then there was a man who stood up. His name is Ken Saru Wiwa. I would like you to read about him. Ken Saru Wiwa stood up and decided to challenge the government. You know what they did? They killed him. They killed Ken Saru Wiwa for challenging the government. They said that it was treasonable or it was something to challenge the military government at that time. And now, Niger Delta is nothing but a state that is sick a very sick state i would like you to do your research on this on these areas and look at whether or not the laws that were promulgated to kill kensaruiwa we'll talk about it when we're talking about our cases to kill kensaruiwa at that point and the fact that kensaruiwa was agitating for this for something that is supposed to be for the good of the people of niger delta we will look at all these things and then come to the realization is natural law really the right theory when defining law or should we also look at other theories also natural law serves as a test of validity of man-made law however natural law philosophy stresses what ought to be done and not necessarily what is done in practice the judiciary interprets what the law is and the executive enforces the same as contained in various sources of law and not natural law what we are saying is when we are looking at natural law natural law does not care what the law is saying natural law tells you we are not looking at what is done what is the law we are not looking at what is done we are looking at what ought to be done what ought to be the law are you listening we are not looking at whether or not uh, the military government has promulgated the law no what is our business with that is that law such that it is fair is that law such that it it should command the obedience of people
I will explain this better when I'm talking about the cases in relation to natural law. Now, it is very important that we look at the philosophers of the, the natural law theory. We look at Aristotle, Zeno, and also Marcus Tullius Cicero. Cicero said that natural law is the true law. Cicero said that the man can know the principle of natural law through what? Reason. I love this. The man can know the principle of natural law through reason. There is no other way. If your thinking faculty is not working well, if you are such that you have been clustered by your by your environment, you are not open to thinking. You know, when I hear some people talk about the gay people and then they say, oh, they're animals, they're this, they're that. If I should give you a reasonable explanation as to why I do not see any reason why we should not have gay rights. I'm not a gay uh, uh, champion or, or whatever it is. No, I have no business whatever with the gay community or the LGBT community. But as somebody who sees human rights as a very big thing, I will tell you that there is no way you'll be an advocate of human rights and be against gay rights because human rights itself is the fact that everybody has a right. And if that is so, it means that if I have a right to my own sexual preference and I say I want a woman, a man should also have his right to his sexual preference, whichever it is. It is nobody's business. Are you listening to me? Reasoning and logic. So Cicero said that the man can know the principle of natural law through what reason that natural law is unchangeable and it applies what universally now when we come to nigeria and he say ah would you like another man to kill another man no when you go to algeria and ask that same question it's still going to be no when you go to the u.s and ask that same question it's still going to be no why because natural law is unchangeable and it applies universally now natural law cannot be changed or abolished the same which is the fact that you should not kill a person just like uh, Cain and Abel in the Bible and God punishing one for killing the other is the same thing that we are talking about now. You shouldn't kill your neighbor. Now, he expressed the radical view that any man-made law or positive law that contradicts natural law should be disobeyed and abolished. You see this thing that uh, Cicero said. We are going to discuss it further in uh, in in, in uh, uh, our cases on natural law. Now, when you are looking at other philosophers, you are looking at uh, Saint Augustine, Justinian. You are looking at Thomas Aquinas. Thomas Aquinas said that if a human law is at variance in any particular way with natural law, it is no longer legal, but rather a corruption of law. Hmm. These are things that when you are writing your exam, you must include. You must include all these philosophers, especially. You can read more on Aristotle and Zeno and all that and know what they said. I just pick pointed these ones from Cicero and Aquinas because I loved the fact that they drove home my points. You know, Aquinas said that if a human made law is at variance with in any particular way with natural law, it is no longer legal. If at all, it's no longer legal that is that is just so strong if it is in any way with the natural law it is no legal which means that when you look at what uh, they did against the uh, cancer rubiwa it is saying that what they did against cancer rubiwa the panel that was set up and then the fact that they applied a law against cancer rubiwa which was in no way just that means that that law that they applied is not legal and should not be obeyed. Which means that what they did in actual fact was killing, murdering Kensariwa and those people who murdered, all of them are meant to be murdered. Are you, are you, oh God, are you following me? When you look at the laws and the things that were done during the military system of government, which they did on the backing of a decree, those decrees which are not just decrees, but were laws or regarded as laws at that point, according to what Aquinas is saying, if any human made law in our context of the military system, any human made decree is at variance with natural law in any particular way, it is not legal and is a corruption of law. And then when you look at at what Cicero said. He said that we should disobey it and it should be abolished. Are you are you following? Which means that if Buhari makes a law today which is against, you know, uh, uh, natural law, we should do, disobey it. I'm not saying you should go and disobey the law. I am teaching you natural law. If you disobey and police arrest you. Sorry about that though. 
<laughs> so when we are talking i told you that nigeria does not practice natural law from the onset of my video i told you that nigeria practices what positive law so don't go and say oh they they, they made a law and cicero said and dear also said <laughs> well you will sleep in prison <laughs> so yes that is just to make you understand what i'm talking about when we are talking about these people when you are writing your exams when you are writing legal method exams these are things that you must include or jurisprudence exam whichever it is these are things that you must include you must put it it must be there the philosophers what they said bring it in context of nigeria today interrogate the cases interrogate past experiences come up with a submission of your own are you listening? That is what makes you a solid law student. You can't just come and say, oh, natural law is what is fair, is what is just and, uh, and, and kind, uh, whatever that is, then poof, poof, stop. You have not gotten anything. You didn't tell me who espoused this particular uh, principle. You didn't tell me what he said. You didn't tell me how we can put it in context of today's reality. You didn't tell me the cases where the court have tried to apply it. You didn't tell me the criticism regarding it. So what do you want me to do? I will score you low. Are you listening to me? Also, Thomas Aquinas said that unjust judgment is no judgment. What Thomas Aquinas is saying is that when the court gives a judgment that is unjust, the court has not given a judgment at all and stuff like that. I would explain this better when we are talking about our cases. Also, we go to other philosophers, Hugo Grotius, Thomas Hobbes, John Locke, Jean-Jack Rousseau, Thomas Paine. Now, you know, one thing I like about Thomas Paine, which made me bring his name out, uh, you know, uh, particularly, is the fact that he's the author of the book, The Right of Man. In that book, he enumerated the fundamental right or natural right of man and added a new category of right known as social right and which, according to him, includes number one, the right to education, right to employment, right to social security, such as pension and family and all that. Don't worry. I don't want you to, you to go too much, you know, but I just want you to understand that there are certain fundamental human rights. However, there are first generation rights, second generation rights, third generation rights. I'll be teaching that when I'm teaching constitutional law, particularly. I don't want to go, you know, into it so much, but I just want you to have a brief understanding of this. Now, we are talking lastly about the examples of law with influence of natural law now we have the criminal code act in our criminal code act what does it tell us it tells us make sure you don't kill make sure you don't rape make sure you don't commit abortion make sure you don't steal make sure you don't uh, commit armed robbery make sure you don't kidnap those are things you see in the criminal code are they things that logically will be fair just and right to promulgate yes and because the answer is yes it falls under the natural law we look at the next one the economic and financial crimes commissions act the efcc act which says that yahoo yahoo boys if you do yahoo yahoo you are caught you are arrested right if you launder money call politicians and laundry money you are caught you are arrested if you embezzle money you are caught you are arrested you also look at the icpc act which is the independent corrupt practices and other related offenses act you also look at the money laundering act you look at law of thoughts now law of thought is i slap you you slap me whatever that is i go to court and collect money for you slapping me are you listening to that because it says love your neighbor don't do anything that is going to put your neighbor in discomfort under the law of thought you have the law of nuisance what is nuisance when somebody is your neighbor and he's playing loud music very loud every day every night you can't sleep you can go to court under the law of thought to stop him or he fries one thing or he rests pig and that pig the stench of it is giving you health problems you can go to court to stop that you also have the law of contract we are supposed to be like god and keep our promises and agreements you know where you have contracted with somebody to do something keep your contract we have the law of trust where where a man dies he can give his property to somebody to hold it in trust for his children if his child after he dies his child is five years old a five-year-old boy cannot hold money in the bank or hold landed properties so he will give it to uh, his own brother that's the child's uncle that is the deceased brother to hold it in trust 
for his son that is the law of trust we have human rights i explained that earlier but we have fundamental human rights in nigerian constitution from section 33 to section uh, 45 section 33 right to life section 34 right to dignity of human person section 35 right to personal liberty section 36 right to a uh, fair hearing section 37 right to privacy section 38 right to religion you know stuff like that all to section 45 and then we have number nine which is the universal declaration of human rights after the second world war the united nation said that every country which is to be under the united nation must have both ratified and domesticated in their country the universal declaration of human rights you have the european convention of human rights which does not apply to africa because africa is not in europe and you also have the African Charter of Human and People's Rights, which of course applies to Africa and has been domesticated in Nigeria by virtue of Section 12 and the case of uh, Fawemi versus Abacha. So lastly, under the natural law theory, if a law is unjust, draconian or otherwise bad, the court should look for every possible loophole to annul it or to avoid enforcing it. Example of laws that do not enjoy the support of people and were frowned upon by the court or were not enforced will be discussed in part B of this lecture. Thank you so much for watching to the end of the lecture. Make sure that you like, share, and uh, subscribe. Also, make sure that you share these videos to your friends. Our next lecture will be talking about the part B of the Natural School of Law Explained, where we'll be discussing the cases of the Natural School of Law. Make sure that you follow me on LinkedIn at Dear Colula Daniels. I will see you in my next class.